Right, so 6.2 is called point slope form. Now all this is, it's a different form of a linear equation. So now we're going to have three forms we've learned, okay? Y equals mx plus b. What's that one called? Okay, that one's called slope-intercept form. Ax plus by equals c. That one's called standard. And that one's typically used for, like, word problems and stuff. And then we have this point slope, which is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And it's in your book here. And all this is, it's an alternative way to find the equation when you don't have your slope and y-intercept. Now, that previous lesson we just worked on how to find slope-intercept form when you don't have those. Plug them in, look for your m, look for your b. All this is is another way to do that. Okay. So, what I'm going to do, again, they give you examples, worked out, all that stuff. I'm going to skip immediately to problem. And I'm going to show you how these work. Now, again, you can go back to the lesson to see the equation. I'm going to write it out up here above it. So, again, the equation is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So what do you notice is missing in this equation? There is no b. There is no y-intercept. Okay? Still has m. The other difference is the y1 and x1 here, those represent our points. Okay? In slope-intercept, we put our point in for x and y. Here, we put it in for x1 and y1. Okay? So how does this work? There's our m. Here's our x1, here's our y1. So all I do is I plug it into the equation. So I get y minus y1, which is 2, equals m, which is 6, times x minus x1, which is 1. Now we're done. That's all you're doing. You're, it's not asking you to change the form of the equation yet. It's just wanting you to plug it into the equation. So not anything. You're not solving anything. Just leave, it like that? just leave it like that. That is the point slope form. That's it. Okay. Do the next one. There's your m. There's your x1. There's your y1. So we plug it in. Y minus y1 equals m times x. Now, here's the thing. The formula is x minus x1. Well, x1 is a negative 3. So what's going to happen here? Two negatives become a change, change. Okay? So you need to simplify that. Don't think that the negative on the point replaces the negative in the formula. It does not. Okay, so I'm going to go immediately to this your turn problem, number six. Only difference, only thing that's changed here is now it's not just a point with a slope. Now it's a word problem, but we're still doing the same thing. Again, I'm going to write the formula up here. Now, one thing, this is one thing you are going to have to memorize. I always tell you math, don't memorize. However, sometimes there are some formulas. Geometry, you're going to have tons and tons of formulas. Here's a formula, quote unquote, that you have to memorize. So, we have to identify the information from the problem. Daisy purchases a gym membership. She pays a sign up fee and a monthly fee of $11. What's that monthly fee representing? <coughs> that is my slope. It's $11. Per month. Doesn't say the word per, but it's implied. And we say anytime we say per, that means slope. After four months, she's paid a total of $59. That now represents a point, a coordinate. 
So what I have here is I have M is $11 per month. I have a point that is four months because that's my X. Remember changing Y, we're changing X. And $59. There's my Y, which is in cost, dollar amount. So I have a point, I have a slope, it's just not given to me in that form like in the previous problem. It's given to me in word problem. So now I just plug into the formula. So y minus 59 equals 11 times x minus 4. There you go. That's it. Do an example, work it out, all that stuff. I'm going to skip that, and I'm going to go right now to the year term problem again, 8 and 9. So what I have... I'm going to write the formula up here at the top again. Y minus Y1 equals M times X minus X1. Okay. Now, we did problems like this in the previous lesson, but we were doing it using slope-intercept form. This time, we're going to use point-slope. Now, the difference is in this particular example is I don't have slope. So I have to find the slope. How do I find the slope? What we did before. What's my change in Y here? Three. Three. What's my change in X? Positive one. It went up one. So my slope here is three. So again, pay attention. That should be a negative three because we went down on our Y, okay? Our X went up one, but that went down, so that should be a negative three. All right, now, we have our slope. We're going to plug into the equation. We plug a point. Which point? One, four, three, three. Does it matter? No. It doesn't matter because both those points are where? They're on the line. So here's what I want you to get. It, let's say I use the first point. This would be my equation. Okay. Now, what if somebody used the second point? Then they get y minus 1 equals negative 3 times x minus 3. Who's right? Both. I want you to try number 9 on your own. Take just a second, try number 9 on your own, then we're going to check it together. That's what you should have gotten. What? Right here. Now, Here's the thing. When you do your slope, your slope is a slope of zero because there was no change in your y. Your y stayed the same. That means this is a horizontal line. And we said the other day a horizontal line has a slope of zero because it's not going up or down. Well, when you plug that into the formula, that means your slope here is zero. Well, anything times zero is zero. So you just end up with zero on the right-hand side. So whether you use the first point or the second point, this is what you should end up with. Now, if you left it like this at the very beginning, that's okay, but really it's like anything else. When you're writing your answer, you need to simplify it. You need to simplify it. All right, so again, the last, very, very last thing they do is they give you the same exact type thing with a word problem. And again, they go through an example, and I'm going to go down to the year turn. And rather than use number, do problem 10, okay, which is you can do problem 10 because they give you a graph and they give you two points on the graph. I'm going to go down to 11 because in 11, there is no graph. There are no points in the problem except in the fact that they're implied in the word problem. So we're going to read it. A roller skating rink offers a special rate for birthday parties. On the same day, a party for 10 skaters costs 107, and a party for 15 skaters costs 137. How much would a party for 12 skaters cost? Okay. 
So what we have here is we have two points. 10 skaters, I'm going to abbreviate, cost me $107. Another point, 15 skaters cost me $137. Those are my two points. Now I'm doing the same exact thing I was doing in the previous problems, except that it was a word problem. I find my slope. Changing my Y was 30. Changing my X was 5. So my slope is 30 over 5, which is 6. Now I can plug in a point. Which point? Does it matter? No. No. I'm going to plug in the first one. So Y minus Y1, which is 107, equals M times X minus X1, which was 10. Now, that's the equation. The problem asks me how much would it cost for 12 skaters. So 12 here represents my X or Y. That is my X. Skaters are my X. So what do I need to do with my equation now? Plug 12 in for X. So now my equation becomes Y minus 107 equals 6 times 12 minus 10. Now I have to work this out. So once you work this out, okay, and again, the book is not going to show you any of these steps. It expects you, I expect you, to be able to solve basic equations. But when you work it out, you get $119. Now, make sure this makes sense. How much did it cost us for 10 skaters? 107. How much did it cost us for 15? So, if I'm, by, if I'm doing 12 skaters, it should be a number that's what? Between 107 and 137, which that is. So my answer makes sense. Now, does that tell me my answer is right? No. But it would tell me if my answer were wrong. wrong. Okay. What are you guys doing for the homework on this one? It is page 255, and you're doing numbers 1 through 11 all. Oops. And 13 through 23 odd.